is. Matters looking, and he just throws it too far out. Had his open man in Luke Shepherson, and I know we've talked about how much he can do, and he can't go up and get that one. Yeah, as far as high as he can jump, that was a little bit out of his range, but uh, it's, it's a nice try anyways, right? Oh, for sure. Matters pulls, has a man. Spencer McCown in the end zone touchdown as Metters had the defensive lineman in his face coming right at him, able to just loft it over there right to the back corner. Staring into the face of taking a hit, takes it, puts it right on the money for McCown. And Nacho Norris gets a little turned around there on that route ran. Yeah, Nigel's been a he's been a good player for us. You know, he you know, he's young. He's still a freshman, you know, but he's has a lot of experience. You know, just get just gets caught right there. You know, good play action call from the offense right there. Great touch from Metters. You know, to Spencer. Uh, it's a good play from the offense. Point after good from Devin Neely. So the great or the white team, excuse me, the offense takes the lead back after that scrimmage set, eighteen to seventeen. And now we will have the residential live field goal kick and a T-shirt cannon for the students here. A little bit of activities going on. This is a great feeling. The day has really opened up. It's been a rainy day here in Campbellsville almost all day. The clouds have been all throughout the sky. The sun's starting to peak out. It's a great temperature. It feels good. It's not too breezy. Just an overall beautiful day, and it feels so good to be back in the booth with, obviously, I mean, <laughs> I look over and I, th I feel like I'm talking to Tony Romo when I talk Tony to you, Ro honestly. Uh, is, you know, I love Tony Romo. You know, but he's, <laughs> there's a, a little bit better out there, but I'll take it for right now. You know, Tony Romo's pretty good, though. Uh, you know, just excited to be here. we got Ethan Gossage out here, you know, ready. I think he's about to do a field goal kick. Uh, former Fighting Tiger for us, four-year starter. Actually, Mr. Campbellsville as well yeah. just got announced yeah. on Wednesday at our awards day. Gossage. Oh, he looks ready. Oh yeah, look at that. He's he was getting he's been watching he was getting Neely tips for the past from Neely. Oh good. for sure. Oh oh oh. 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 Well, he had the height, just maybe not the distance. Oh, he needs to put more leg into that. I'm a little shocked. <laughs> I know. Little shocked. I'm I little know. <laughs> We, we were we were we were touting Ethan, and I, I tell you, I feel I feel a little robbed. Hey, I'm still on the side here. He, he's one. He's my RA, my senior RA. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm still on. Okay. Uh, just, okay. Okay. We're moving forward. The short, five yard line. Distance. All right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> a low driver. <laughs> it's all the same. It goes in right there. <laughs> Ethan, uh, he, he's a fun guy. Has a great spirit to him. Uh, he's so fun. You know, he's so charismatic as well. You know, loves his teammates. He loved this football program. You know, he's he's leaving us after this spring semester on you know going on to do different things. Ironically, he's going to KCU to be one of their graduate ministers. Uh, you know, so he's going to do great things there. Happy for him. Happy he can get that field goal into. Well, uh, it looks like the uh, the next drill was supposed to be the man maker, but right now it looks like we're going to have a dry fire kickoff. Both teams kind of huddled there on the sideline, so I I'm not sure if we're going to the man maker or if we're not. T-shirt can a good crowd on hand too, especially. You, know, you get this last week here near finals week. Next week is finals week, I guess I should say. You know, graduation coming up yep. for a Friday. You know, it's pretty – I know a lot of students. I know especially in my time, I, I like to take this week, try to get a little bit of the non-essentials, I guess, home for the weekend, try to move out a little bit, and then that way you don't have much to take home afterwards. But still a very, very good crowd on hand. We got food trucks over to yep. the right. We got inflatables. 
They've really made this an event. I'm still thinking about that lemonade I had, Paul. I don't know, <laughs> man. It was, it it was, was good. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was good. Yeah. But it was like, not, it, just, it wanted to be sweet, but yeah. it just really didn't get, I don't know, man. It was, it was hey. good. It was refreshing. Hey, I, I, I get it. You know, I, I'm doing just fine. I'm all hopped up on my sun kissed and my nerds gummy clusters, and, you know, I'm doing just fine. Yeah, actually, I've been thinking about it. You, even ha you haven't even offered me one yet. I'm uh, a little you upset know, about that. I would. <laughs> If it's one of those guilty pleasures, you, you know, you're selfish no, about it. I no, understand. No, I have I, some, a few of mine. <laughs> I'd, gla I'd gladly let you have some. I've you, been drinking Olipop you, recently. You know, really good yeah. for your digestive system. Mm -hmm. A little, you know, sparkling okay. water with some flavor in there. Okay. Uh, really good for your gut health. I'm not sharing that thing with anybody. Okay. So I understand. I, that's how no, you are about the nerds. That's how, that's how I am with my Alani's. But, it, hey, it's okay, all okay, good. Okay, yeah, I get you. Yeah, your Alani's. <laughs> here comes the man maker. We roll the tire out. So we're getting ready for the man maker here. So we'll have a couple of matchups. We'll have four different matchups, and they will be pulling on this tire in the middle until it is deemed the other person is lost. Do you ever participate in this type of drill? I want to say I did. I'm going to probably say it was in high school, though. Um, yeah. I, there's not too many memories from that, though. We've done, I've done so many drills, so many different competitions. you know. But it's, it's just a good way to get guys involved, get the energy up, and keep it up, especially when it gets down to, uh, in between those scrimmages, a little downtime. This is what you want to do. You want to get guys hyped up, get the energy going. But when you go back into your scrimmage, you know, everyone's flying around having fun. We have Lionel Taylor versus Jalen Martin here. To start off matchup number one. Looks like the defense starting to pull away with it. Uh-oh, offense is not done. Going at it. Ooh. He's trying. He's got him on the ground. It's his time to make up, and he goes to the ground himself. Here comes back the offense. Hearing a whistle. See who they gave it to. Offense had the line. They'll right? give it to Maroon. Oh, Maroon. So they'll give it to the defense. Okay. Hey, I'll take it. We'll take it. I've never I've never done the scoring on who wins a man maker, so I guess maybe it's who's more in control for most of the time, I suppose. Kinda, I don't know. Kind of like a boxing match, I guess. You know, you score it a little bit. Matchup number two, Day Montgomery versus Keegan Daniel. Yeah, this is a little bit of a, a size mismatch. This is here. Not a matchup. Boy. <laughs> okay, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the offense will take that one. Good call, good call. 19-18 as they take the lead back. Now we have Spencer McCown versus Colton his song. Spencer McCown scoring that touchdown earlier. Uh-oh. Starting to drag his song. And another point for the offense. Colton had it right there. You know, I think he had it. He just kept losing his leverage, and at the end of the point, you know, Spencer gave up a good fight. Just lost the battle. We got a, we got a quarterback versus the punter here as Luke Manning will come in and take on Lopez. I'm going Lopez. Uh-oh. Here comes Manning. All right, gave Lopez too much credit. I'm going Manning. <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you switching back to Lopez here? All right, I'm switching back, going Lopez. <laughs> My see, original pick. See, yeah, original pick. Uh, yeah. I, I'll give it to you. I'll say that counts. <laughs> see, Lopez, Lopez, I think, has your advantage there. You, the punter, he's, work, he's working on his legs all the time. You, you know fake, what I'm saying? Right? He's got the stronger it, legs. You know, he, He's a good athlete. You know, yeah. I think the legs are with him right there. He just, at the beginning, just didn't have it. But you know, he, he rallied. So I want to apologize for any of the technical difficulties that we had at the beginning of the broadcast as well while we have a second a break in the action. If you weren't able to hear us for the first little bit, <laughs> you know, we were in here, I guess, just talking to ourselves. It was a good warm-up to get ready for the rest of what was to come. But the Tigers, it's a new season, new faces on the on the coaching staff, some very familiar faces as well. And I know that 
the university, this campus, everybody is extremely excited to get this next season ushered in. That's kind of what this is, a little bit of a new ushering in of this culture, of this change, and ready to get into the fall as we recognize the women's volleyball team for their Mid-South Conference regular season championship. Congratulations to those ladies. Man, a, a lot of our sports are doing good things. You know, a lot of winning is going on. For you know, sure. And a lot, of, like all the sports, you know, when it comes down to it, wrestling you know, is doing great things. Bass fishing is doing great things. Volleyball, you know, the list goes on, you know, and you love to see it. Um, I'm just happy to be a part of, you know, this athletics, this group here. But going back to football, you know, change uh, can be a difficult thing. You know, but it can also, you know, inspire and, and have that motivation and, and bring excitement. So, you know, Coach Russell, super excited for him. You know, got to play with him for two years in my, out of my career. Very, two very successful years. He's bringing in a new culture. He's excited himself, and he's really about the relationship and investing in his guys. But he, he wants to win. He's a winner. You know, he's, he's won everywhere he's been. You know, so I'm excited for him and what he's going to do for this program. We'll talk a little bit more about the coaches later. We get set for this next offense versus defense matchup starting from the 40-yard line here and going in will be Jagger – or not Jagger Gillis, excuse me. <laughs> I, I know darn well that that is not Jagger Gillis. That is number 13, Josh Meglis. And we'll get a false start. Meglis was QB1 last year and just got banged up a little too much and tried to fight through some stuff but just couldn't really keep coming back from hit after hit. And Gillis came in and played a lot of the snaps there in late season. So he fires one over the middle to Shepperson and they get right back to where they left off as Shepperson drags his defenders to the 21-yard line. Yeah, and I honestly, I like Meglis, and I'm glad he's back. You know, he, he's he's a, he's a good quarterback. You know, he brings a lot of different things uh, to this program. I think the offense changed a lot once he got out, but I would love to see him in that offense that we did have. But having him now, you know, you know, throw, throwing a strike right there to Luke Shepperson, you know, I think Meglis can throw it a little bit. He can really expose the defense. So I'd love to see what he has here. Rolling to his right, throws. Back of the end zone, a little too much heat, but still it was great coverage downfield by Anton Fant. Yeah, going back to Meglis, I he can really throw it, and he can you know throw some strikes in there, throw some strikes, and you know, I'm interested to see what he has here. You know, it, it's a it's kind of a full QB room. Got some more QBs coming in, you know, next semester. So I'm interested to see what it's going to look like as far as competition goes, and who you know edges out for that QB one spot in the fall. Trying to get a number on the running back, but I can't really see it. Meglis throws one to start of him. It's behind him and trying to turn around. Gets through his fingers. Looks like 22 Terrence Salter uh, at the running back position right now. We saw him more towards the end of the season. He came in and was sh shouldering a lot of the load as Trey Bass and some of those guys, C.A. Collins, that three-headed monster that we had at the beginning of the season started getting a little banged up. Aaron Salter came in, provided a lot of good snaps from that running back position. Meglis had Pope, but Pope just drops it. Yeah, right there, the timing was just a little bit off. You know, I, I think Meglis took a little bit too long to get that ball in there. It's a little bit behind him, you know, but you got the defender coming, so he's trying to protect the receiver. Tim Pope couldn't come up with the pass, got his hands on it, of course, but the timing was just a little off right there. You wanted to see them connect a little bit sooner, get the ball out just a little bit quicker. So we'll see if Neely can make this field goal. 23-18, to 18, the offense leads at the moment. Field goal is good. So three points for the offense. We'll make it 26 to 18. So we go under 12 minutes here in the offense versus defense. So 
So the familiar faces for the coaching staff, we have Hunter Brown coaching the wide receivers today. We have Forrest Gardner coaching the offensive line today and Coach Matt Atwood coaching the linebackers today. So those coaches returning from the previous staff, of course, we already mentioned Jake Russell. Is He really needs no introduction around here, yeah. but I'll gladly reintroduce him to campus. His name all throughout the record books here as a quarterback, very highly decorated in his playing days. Previously coached at KCU, now coaching here at Campbellsville. Yeah, you talked about familiar faces, but, man, there's been so much change on this coaching staff. Everyone's coaching in new spots. You know, so you got Hunter Brown, Coach Brown, who was coaching quarterbacks, you know, last semester. Now he's over at receivers. You got Coach Atwood coaching monsters. Now he co he's coaching all the linebackers. You got Coach Garner, who's coaching defensive line. Now he's at offensive line. So there's a lot of change and a lot of adjustment. You know, but I think guys are in good spots. You know, they know football. You know, you know they know their guys. They know this program, too. So it's still good to have those guys in that you can still rely on. Gillis in at quarterback for the offense here on this drive. Has somebody coming from behind, able to get it out. Great play from Johnson, making a lot of men miss. And he gets taken out. As Hicks got him out of bounds. Yeah, they call they call him Jerry. Uh, we haven't gotten to see a lot of him necessarily. Uh, you know, some injuries have gotten in the way, but watching him in spring practice, knowing him just a little bit, he is very aggressive. He's, as you see on the replay here, James Johnson making plays, making guys miss, and that's the kind of guy he is. He can run someone over, but he can also get a little shifty, especially in space. Has great size. John Gillis pull had me looking over at Johnson. Great pull from Gillis as he moves forward, gets another first down for the offense. But yeah, even on the end of that other last play, you saw Jeremiah and James Johnson, you know, get a, get a little, you know, energy going between them two, you know, challenging each other a little bit. And, you know, that's what they bring to this team. Of course, at, at the end of the day, they are teammates and they know that, you know, but it's offense versus defense right now. So there's a little bit of energy picking up, and I love to see this. Gillis. It's three out to the right. He fumbles the snap. Shovels it down to Johnson. He gets taken down behind the line. Hicks gets fired up. I'm telling you, man, he, the kid has great size. He has a lot of energy, and he is ready to play. Now, he's very excited to be on the field. I'm very excited to have him. I think he brings a different element to this defense we haven't exactly seen, uh, but I'm excited to what he's going to bring. C.A. goes in for Johnson as he comes off. Looking a little gimpy, probably just a little stunned. Looks at the athletic trainer, says he's fine. Be nice to have C.A. Collins in, a healthy C.A. Collins. Get him back into the lineup for this offense. That one thrown just into the middle of two wide receivers, but a little bit of no man's land. Yeah, just as he is thrown right there, Jagger gets hit, you know, alters the throw quite a bit. Uh, but going back to C.A., man, I, that might be my favorite thing, a healthy C.A. You know, it's always good to have him on the field. He's a great guy, uh, works hard. He is a hard runner. Uh, he can move very well. You know, so it's good to see him out there. I love Jagger's pocket presence. He just stays in the pocket. He stays so calm. He stays in there till he has to get out, and he wants to deliver that throw. He wants to get it on the money. Gillis drops back into the pocket. Throws over the middle, and I'm not sure if that went through the hands and legs of Spencer McCown or not. I couldn't tell how dead on that was. Yeah, it looked like both right there, but a little a little low and a little hot. You know, Spencer wasn't able to really adjust to it too much. So the punt team will come out. You said punt team. There's two guys out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It feels a little odd that the punters wearing uh, wearing maroon on the defensive side. I uh, don't know. No, no. Yeah, he's uh, he's helping out his defense, though. Honestly, what do you mean? I'll take it. And he's talented. We'll take it. Okay. Yeah. No, but he, no, he's helping out that defense, and you know. Getting, giving them good field position, helping them out, you know, making sure that the opposing offense is pinned back. You know. 
Okay. That's my guy. I I, I, I like the explanation. Yeah, don't you? I, I, don't, I was I was a little don't confused try to at take first. Take him away from no, us. No, I was no, I was a little confused <laughs> yeah, at first, hey, but it's okay. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm for you. He, yeah, he's for us. <laughs> trying to take him away from us. I don't, I don't appreciate that. Call. Hey, he scored your point in your man maker drill too. <laughs> I switched up a little bit on him, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Luke Manning will be out in the set this time for the offensive drive. Didn't have a great, you know, first drive right there, so hopefully things can get a little bit back on track and get some good reps for him. He'll hand off with CA. Collins off to the races. Stiff arm. He'll push forward a first down. I said it earlier, he runs hard. You know, he can move very well. You know, seeing him go in and out through the lanes, uh, through the holes, he, he he's a good runner. He's a really good running back, and he's just a really good locker room guy as well. As you see here on the replay, reading the blocks, getting around the corner, he almost comes up with a stiff arm right there, but, you know, gets a good run and gets the first down. Good defense from Jaden Brown, the DB out of DeLam, Florida. Manning hands off once more and taken down. By number 44, Zamari Bell, the linebacker from Decatur, Alabama. Yeah, you're seeing a really modern offense right now, you know, out of, you know, this Coach Russell crew. You know, you see a lot of shovel passes. You're seeing some RPOs, a lot of play action, getting the ball out quick, you know, bubble screens here and there, passing over the middle. So trying to get around the field, uh, throw all over the field, run over the field, some inside zone. It's been really fun to see so far. Manning has Collins directly behind him, hands off. Collins starts chugging the legs. He'll gain about, looks like about four or five on the play. There's a switch for number 20, Camarion Robinson. He'll keep it himself and gets hammered before the first down. Not the biggest quarterback, but Manny can move a little bit himself. And, I, you know, he has a little shake to him. And I, I think he likes to run the ball as well. Didn't, uh, didn't mind getting the mix of things right there and going up the middle either. Definitely a little undersized for sure, but you always love the heart out of an undersized quarterback. Got a little too shifty there. As he loses that one, we'll see who comes up with it. Looks like the offense maintained possession there. He's got a little too shifty. He tried to switch hands there. So the turnover on downs. Defense jumps up into the lead, 33 to 29. Defense playing pretty well today. You know, they've given up a few, but, you know, right now you know, we have we have the lead. You know, we saw it in that spring practice scrimmage. I keep saying we. But where the, the, <laughs> the no, it's team. okay. <laughs> Let everybody know what side you're on here. I, I, you, I'm for the Tigers, all right? Okay. For the Tigers. Okay, okay. Hi. All right. We have Metters in the backfield. Throws over the middle. Beautiful defense there from Norris. Able to get his hand in, stay clean. Knock that pass away from McCown. Metters and Salter in the backfield. Looking to the left, hits Johnson. And I believe that'll move the chains. Another first down, got just under two minutes left here for the offense to try to get some points on the board 
and maybe take back the lead from the defense. Pulls it from Salter, throws, and just gets out of the hands of Gabe Moore, the wide receiver from Owenton, Kentucky. Pretty good play action right there. Defense showing a lot of different looks, but, you know, offense almost catches them sleeping right there, just wasn't able to connect with the receiver. But I like the variation of what the defense provided, just different looks and, you know, changing a lot of things post-snap as well. Matters. One minute. Throws had somebody behind him. Wasn't able to get his hand on the ball, but McCown will come down with it. Third down for this offense, 40 seconds left in counting. They look over, get the play from head coach Jake Russell. Yeah. And he gets absolutely <laughs> lit up. Three maroon around Metters within just a couple of seconds of the snap. And that is a fumble. And the defense will score six on that turnover. I don't know if he, I don't know if Metters saw it or not, but I'm looking at the defense. I'm like, man, they're they're doing a lot of different stuff. You know, they got corners playing super inside there. They got the safety shading over. You see, as on the replay there, you know, it's just a jailbreak at that point. A lot of guys are getting through. Ball gets loose. A recovery by the defense right there. I mean, that's that's fun and and that's awesome. Colton does a great job of covering the ball, you know. But you see the safety shading over uh, to the left, coming down a little bit. You gotta expect Colton come off the edge right there, and he did. He got in the backfield. I I, this is a fun defense. You know, they're gonna blitz. They're gonna be aggressive. You know, they're gonna try to confuse the quarterback and switch things up for the offense. So I'm excited to see what they're doing. Here on the right side, over in the end zone. We're recognizing the women's soccer team for their Mid-South Conference Tournament Championship. Really a magical run for the Lady Tigers as they were able to knock off an undefeated Cumberland Patriots team and take home a big conference tournament title. Like I said, our sports, man, and I, I had a hard time listening off the sports earlier. We got 32 sports teams here, mm -hmm. and they all just run through my head. Sometimes I forget which even sports I cover. I just you know help out with both, but you know they're doing a lot of good things, and we have a lot of great coaches, great players, a great training staff, great broadcasting as well. Like, you know, I, you know, this is a great universe, great university to be a part of, and you know, a lot of people excelling in a lot of different places. You know, a lot of our sports are able to get coverage provided by the CU Sports Network. And that's one of the great things here at the university. We were able to do so much with what we have and give our athletes some of this fun time to be able to come out. Our bass fishing team is nationally, very nationally highly ranked. Would love to be able to do stuff for them. Sadly, man, we number can't. five, man. Number I don't know, five. Number five in the nation, you know, and, and these aren't just like NAI rankings either. Yeah. This is uh, Bassmaster rankings and, you know, teams like Auburn University, the University of Tennessee. You know, these schools are on those rankings, and our school is ahead. Yeah. So We got some studs over there. Uh, Coach Miracle, love him. He's a stud himself. I, I hope he gets to hear this at some point. But. And it looks like there will be musical chairs, women's flag football, the bass, bass fishing, fishing the there. cheer. See you dance. See you dance. See you dance. Women's, wrestling. women's wrestling. Another team. Women's the past three years, they brought home two national championships. Men's swimming, women's soccer. And their competitors, the CU cheer coach, Vanessa Atkins. And the bass fishing coach, Tony Miracle. There he is, my guy. Well, you can't hear this because <laughs> he's out there. That's why. Big shout out to Tony. We love Tony Miracle here up in the broadcast booth. Had a great time filming inside CU Sports with him 
fun guy to be around, great guy. Yeah, I would suggest go. I would suggest going to our Camelsville Tigers page and watching Inside CU Sports Network, hosted by uh, the Khalil Baker. Oh, that's me. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's you. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Luke. Uh, Luke just texted me. Let's Ooh. oh, is tough fall right there. We've got a battle for the chair here. I don't think that's allowed, but ah, that's a. Tell you what, I were they supposed to do the man maker drill with the chair? <laughs> I, I'm not sure here. But we'll talk a little bit here about some of those new coaches as well because I know some of that conversation was missed. Jeff Owens, the defensive line coach for the Tigers. This is somebody that I know we were really excited to have here at the university on the coaching staff. Coach Owens played for the University of Georgia from 2005 to 2009. He was first team all SEC, part of their SEC championship team. He was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles in the 2010 draft. And now we have him here coaching the defensive line. And I mean, you want to talk about a wealth of knowledge to learn from. If you're a prospective D lineman or a D lineman that we have already, you know, you're just able to learn and get a lot of good practical experience from somebody that's played at an extremely high level. Yeah, you talk about a, uh, a guy who gets first team All SEC, who gets drafted into the NFL. Like that, that's a bad man. You know, you got if you go to the University of Georgia, you're a bad man. Uh, and you know, it, we're just fortunate to have you know so many great coaches here, including Coach Owens. You know, we're great grateful to have his experience, the knowledge he can bring. Just getting to see, getting to see him coach. You know, his guys on the defensive line and helping them work with their hands. You know, helping them. You know, just really learn. You know what. You know the position takes. You know to be really good at it, using your leverage, using your body, using your hands to get around guys. You know, knowing where. You, you know, knowing where you can strive in uh, on that line, different fronts, different stunts. So and I'm excited to have him. I'm glad he's here, you know, just to you know, help push those guys. Jody Ford coming in as the defensive coordinator for the Tigers. Uh, he's done a lot of coaching down in Texas. He's been a part of winning a Southland Conference championship. Um, they've gone – he's been to the national playoffs. You know, he's done a lot of recruiting down there. This is certainly somebody that – is very good. He's been successful at a D1 SCS level. It's somebody that is another great addition for this team that wasn't necessarily, you know, you brought Jeff Owens over from KCU with Jake Russell, and now this is a little bit more of an out-of-system, I guess maybe would be the term, higher, but certainly a great pull-in to have now. Yeah, Coach Ford comes with a lot of experience. You know, he's been in a lot of different places, and he just loves football. Uh, he, he's going to challenge his guys. He's going to be another – I mean, all of our coaches are going to be that way, but just, you know, focusing on the player, you know, wanting to teach, wanting to invest in that relationship. You know, and we talked about a little bit about it during the broadcast, but just being able to provide different fronts, different looks for the off or for the offense and, you know, try to confuse them a little bit, but also bring some pressure and being aggressive, you know, and just being a matchup type of team as well too. So week-to-week -week basis, you know, things are going to change. Uh, the, you know, the scouting report is going to change, and, and they're going to be game plan specific. And that's what you want out of a coach, and especially on defense. And that's what you want a, a guy who is going to cater to the players on his team. Uh, you know, that's you know my favorite type of coach, and you know that's what you want to strive for, and that's what you want to have if you're you know playing uh, football or any you know, any type of sport. We've also had Ryan Beatty to the staff as the secondary coach. He worked at KCU. He had he was an All Conference caliber cornerback, and he was a part of the best season in KCU history. They finished 6-2 and two on the season. In year two, KCU had the first-ranked pass defense in the NAI, and as a special teams coordinator for KCU, they have blocked seven punts and eight field goals and extra point attempts. So this is somebody that really knows his stuff coming in to teach this secondary where he already has a lot of talent already on the roster. We spoke about some of that talent. 
and more talent soon to come for sure. Yeah, he has some really good players to work with right now. And just talk about the recruiting class again. We have a really good recruiting class coming in. I'm so super, super excited to see them. I know they're hungry. I know they're ready to play. I know they're ready to compete. Uh, but Coach Beatty, he is he's he's a good one. I'm excited to have him here. You know, he has a great track record with just changing over. You know, being successful on special teams, which is huge. Being successful on defense and changing programs and you know changing seasons. So it's good to have him here. He's about teaching. He's about his guys. You know, so I'm ex I'm excited. And there's our winner for musical chairs. And. I believe oh we are coming up on the dance off here. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so representing the offense is James Johnson and representing the defense is number zero, Jaden Brown. Jaden Brown is a fiery one. He uh brings a lot of energy, you know, to the team. You know, he, he loves to talk. He, he loves to, you know, be engaged. He's out in the field and you know his his presence is being felt. Comes with a lot of personality. I'm expecting to see it right now. James has a lot of personality himself. I don't know what to expect from a dance off between football players in their you know, uniforms, in their football pads during the spring game. You know, so I'm I'm a little scared. I'm a little optimistic. I don't know what's going to happen between these two. You know, this was something that we had talked about. We had we had a, uh, I guess I'd call it maybe a pre-production meeting, I guess. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting with Coach Russell, and he came to us and was telling us all the list of events of what we would be doing. And he said, you know, this is this is kind of what we've done in the past. This is what I've done at KCU. And he, he pulls up a video and he says, you know, we're going to do a dance off. And I said, a dance off, coach. This is this is a spring game. And he said, oh yeah, we're going to do a dance off for sure. And I said, okay, you know, uh, please go ahead, coach. And he said, this has brought in a lot of fun. It adds a lot of energy. Yeah. And certainly, you can see the guys out there loving it as Johnson starts out. We'll see. We'll see what the retaliation here is from Jaden Brown. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, and I, I hope he gets to hear this at some point. But that Dougie was weak. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> was a weak okay. Dougie. <laughs> All right. So you heard it here first, folks. Khalil Baker says the Dougie was weak from <laughs> James weak. Johnson. His play on the football field is a lot better. So now we'll see what Jaden Brown. Jay, oh my goodness! A little bit of a backflip in the midst. Oh, a little bit of break dance. Okay. Getting hyped up. We've seen another backflip. Very athletic individual. This is somebody that you would are excited to see. Yeah. I think you just see James too, Johnson coming out hit a little I know. A little too late, James. I don't I don't think Johnson knew that the backflip was was a dance move, I guess. That's probably what happened. He's been uh, apparently has never watched any dance movie there is. Step up, you got served, <laughs> yeah. whatever yeah. you, you want to say. Good try, though. Good effort, guys. Good effort. So we're going to head to a little bit of a halftime break. So in that halftime break, we'll step away. The defense, the Maroon team leading 45-30 to 30 over the white team and the offense. Well, Actually, they've moved positions. We'll see what they what they do here. I guess we're not going to a halftime. Just following the script here. So I suppose that that was not the halftime intermission. I guess the halftime was in the middle of the musical chairs and dance off. Yeah. So we're going to move right. on to a drill. I'm going to keep it right here. So we move to the offensive versus defensive competition, the board drill. So matchup number one is Jaden Brown, none other. The dance-off winner, and now the big-time winner of the board drill over Jaquan Sturdivant. Yep. I was not surprised by that one. <laughs> I know, no offense to Jaquan. And, um, Jaquan I'm, I'm glad he's, he's out there competing, but they set him up right there. They set my guy up right there. They have Luke Shepherson taking on Trevin Griffin. Griffin and Shepperson going at it. Shepperson starting to get that pushback now. Yeah, Trey was able to you know, get some ground right there and still make Luke a little bit. You know, Luke fired off, 
And they'll give it to the offense, it looks like. So Shepperson wins that matchup. Now Zamari Bell versus Terrence Salter. Starting to push back now. Salter trying to muscle it up, but Bell will take him to the turf. Now, Alan Parrish versus Corbin Murphy. This might be a pretty good one. Alan Parrish, really, really good player. Um, we got a little D-line versus O-line action. Yep, really good size. Murphy, Parrish. Parrish starting to push. A little bit of a slip. Murphy sliding backwards. And Parrish will get the best of that one as the defense comes away with another point. I'm not trying to analyze the board drill, but Allen did a great job just reestablishing himself, had great technique right there, shot his hands, kept them inside, kept repositioning right there. It's like he played offensive line at some point or something. I don't know what that was, but that was good technique right there. Khalil, if you're not here to analyze them, what are, what are you doing What here? am I doing? Yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh, please, analyze all, <laughs> all you want. Once again, the spring game scoring just looking a little bit different than usual. So if you're looking at the score and you see 47 to 32, you might think to yourself, oh my gosh, there's been a lot of action. Well, it's a little different. Defense allowed to score points on defensive lineman touchdowns, their own touchdowns, turnovers, drives with no points, three and out series and sacks and tackles for losses. And the offense scoring on a non-skilled player touchdown and, you know, touchdowns, field goals, two-point conversions, PATs. The only difference really for them is an explosive play points, 30-yard pass or a 20-yard run, and then they get a point for a first down as well. And then each team scores a point for winning the rep in these drills. So a very high-scoring first half, 47 to 32. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you got a fiery defense, a defense that gets after and just flies around. You, you, they're kind of made to win these type of matchups, of course. And the offense has done fine today. Uh, the defense has really brought it. I've been impressed. You know, they've you know gotten they've caught they've got caught slipping a little bit in some areas, and that's going to happen. You're a spring game here. You've they've gone against each other all spring, anyways. That way too. Uh, so you know. Really excited to see you know what the offense has here. Maybe they can turn things around and get some points on the board. I really like what I've seen from the offense today. They have looked good from really all four of the quarterbacks. Both all four have made great passes. We've done well in terms of leading the offense down the field, and the defense has done an even better job of adjusting as well. We saw that in the scrimmage. Meglis has somebody at his feet. Johnson gets lit up by Hicks. And we already know Hicks was going to let him hear it as them two have been going at it. I want to see Meglis right there just a little bit more under control as we see the replay right here. You know, number 18 gets around the edge pretty quickly and, you know, you know, Meglis has to you know, get out of the pocket a little bit. I want to see him hold it a little bit more, just to be a little bit more control and try to, you know, put James in a better situation and get a pass and, you know, you know, not get blown up like that a little bit. A little bit of a high snap, pulls it down, throws well over the head of Sturdivant. 47-32, still the score here. 14 minutes left in this set. We'll see here if the offense dials up on third down. As he rolls out to the right, throws over, hits his man on the sideline. That's a catch number three. Tim Pope over there on the sideline able to haul it in. I'll give Trayvon Williams some credit too. Number 18, doing a great job just getting around the edge and putting pressure on the quarterback, really making things difficult, you know, for Meglis right there. You know, it happened on first down, happened on third down, had to get out of the pocket and really rush his throw a little bit. So great job to him just you know, having that bend and getting around the tackle. Big six points for the defense, a drive with no points and a three and out as they start racking it up. The offense is going to have to get going here soon. Lopez picks it up off the turf. That one's spinning. 
And that would have taken a great Tiger bounce. New set getting ready to come out here in just a moment. I'll let you know what quarterback is heading out there. Looks like it'll be Gillis. Gillis steps in. We'll have Collins in the backfield with him. Runs out to the side. Collins trying to hit the sideline. Lowers the shoulder. And... Nine-yard gain for Collins. Just to highlight some guys on the defense right now, number six, Travell Wright, uh, you know, freshman young guy. You know, he, there's a lot of promise for this guy, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Has a lot of great size. He can fly around, you know, and he's still, you know, just learning the game. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, very impressed with what I've seen from him this spring as well. Speaking of is able to come up with a tackle against CA right there. You know, shoots right through the hole and is able to get that shoelace tackle right there. Travell Wright, the linebacker out of Cleveland. Here in Camelsville for the Tigers. And again, a lot of youth on this on this team, this defense and offense, but also a lot of experience with that youth. You know, you got Kel Hagan at the other stand-up linebacker position, number 39. Gillis rolls out to the left, throws, has him on the sideline. And that is number 15. That is Lionel L.J. Taylor, the wide receiver out of Fort Knox. Great tackle, open field tackle right there too, which is difficult. You know, you know, num uh, number 55, Colton, you know, bigger guy, you know, moving out in space. You got to tackle, you know, a skill play right there, but he comes up with it and you know, makes a great play for his defense. Sends a man in motion. Pulls from all, but gets hit right up the middle. I just need to start name dropping some guys. As soon as I say Kale, right next play, comes up with a sack. Uh, a very experienced guy, more comfortable standing up in that linebacker position last semester, you know, being with his hand on the ground. So right now he feels a little bit more at home. Uh, great size himself, too. Brings great aggression. He looks like a stud, and he is a stud out there. Remember that for this upcoming season in the fall. Remember that. You should just name drop every name player drop. that we got, for sure. Gillis throws one down the sideline, over, throws Taylor. Yeah, that's one you want back right there. He puts his head down a little bit. Uh, Jagger, he really wanted that one back. Taylor had a step on him. Or a few, honestly. <laughs> Another six points coming for the Maroon. Lopez. Ready to bomb it away once more. Another beautiful punt. Lopez definitely, I know we talked about him a little at the start, but Certainly an unsung hero on this team last year as, you know, when the offense couldn't really get it going last year, a lot of times he was able to pin, you know, the opposing offense inside the 20 and, I mean, a lot of times inside the 10 as well and just give the defense as much room, you know, as they could to where, you know, you make a team drive 90, 80, 90 yards down the field every single time. You know, that starts to wear on you after a while. Yeah, and, and our defense had some really good, you know, games last season. And special teams, you know, Lopez, Neely were big parts of that. I, in my mind, goes straight to the Lindsey Wilson game last year, which is a game we honestly should have won. It came down to the, uh, you know, to the you know, last few plays, last quarter, you know, just wasn't able to get it done. And, of course, special teams was a big part of that, letting up a touchdown. You know, Lindsey's offense couldn't do any too, really too much at all. Uh, they weren't very comfortable. Our defense was just flying around. So, you know, games like that, you know, where it's, you know, it, it comes down to a lot of discipline, comes down to your special teams and your guys making plays. Manning pulls from Johnson, throws to the sideline, has McCown, nobody in the same zip code as Spencer McCown. 
He was in Taylor while everybody else was in Adair. <laughs> That's funny. And a first down for the Tigers. As we get the replay here, Nigel just you know, is looking in the backfield and it just gets caught lacking right there. You can you know, see he, McCown calling for it too. And it, he, he needs to know he has that zone there. He needs to know he has Spencer on his back. He needs to close that distance a little bit more and know that you know, he can, uh, you know, Luke can make that throw right there. I think it surprised Nigel a little bit. And another one as Shepherson finds himself wide open, I guess. This time everybody else was in Greene County yeah. and Shepherson was in Taylor and he'll score a big touchdown, get some much needed points on the board for the white team. Looked like a little miscommunication right there between Nigel and the other DB you know, and, and Luke right there. Wide open. Two big miscommunications on the defensive side there in that secondary. And that leads to two big plays for a Camelsville touchdown. And that's a great offensive play call right there. You see on the replay we had just a minute ago, you know, they faked the little screen right there. Luke fakes the block, goes right up um, on the wheel route. You know, Nigel bites on it, thinks he needs to make a play, help his other guy out right there. And, you know, Luke is screaming free, wide open down the sideline and runs it in for a touchdown. And, you know, those, that's what you get from those young guys sometimes, you know. You, know, you jump the gun a little bit. You want to be there for that screen. Uh, you know, that's a big responsibility, too, you know, because you know, one tackle broken right there, and that could be a touchdown itself. You know, but you just need to be a little bit more patient, really read that guy. And he really wasn't even that aggressive with the blocking right there. He, he looked like he just body position-wise just went out there a little bit. But it wasn't like his hands weren't up. He wasn't like, you know, stock blocking anything that way, too. So you just got to read that play. That would be one he'll you know, come back from. He'll see on the film. Coach Beatty will get him right, and he'll you know, learn from it, of course. Looks like Metters will step out there for the offense. He'll get another crack at scoring some points, and we'll see if the white team can close this gap even more as they find themselves trailing by 15 here with five and a half minutes left in this drive. There will be one more competition after this one as it is the goal line wide receiver versus DB 1v1 drill. And then we will have another 15-minute drive where the offense will start on the defensive 40-yard line and go out this time rather than in. It's not hard to confuse our quarterbacks here. You know when Metters walks <laughs> into that <laughs> into that line. And there's that cannon. Throws downfield. Norris does a good job breaking that up over McCown. Man, that, that was a good ball, honestly. Great play by Norris. He was in awesome position right there and really didn't give up any leverage, you know. Was able to make a play on the ball. Good ball from Metters. You know, you want to try to get you know, Spencer a chance to make that play a little bit more. We want Spencer to make that play, but you know, it's a it's a good back and forth from the receiver and the DB. Metters lines up. Bit of a hard count there. That looks at the sideline. They get ready. And keeps getting popped around. Offense honestly lucky that that falls to the turf as Chance Calvin, or not Chance Calvin, excuse me, that was on the white team. That was Josiah Roby, the wide receiver out of Franklin, Kentucky. And cold right there, as soon as he got back in his drop, great play from him right in the right spot at the right time, gets his hands in there and is able to make a play for the defense, almost came up with that interception, which also would have been huge, already being up 58-43. Matters to the left. And... 
Roby gets back into it, gets himself a reception there. Three minutes left in the drill. Nigel was in too good a position right there for him to get that many yards. I had to say it. I couldn't help myself. Great read on it, honestly. Great read. He's in the zone, in his flat. He just needs to be a little bit more aggressive with that tackle. Don't go around him. Go through him, you know. Metters has two out wide to his right. Pope here on the near side. He'll look back over the middle and... Ball, ball's tipped. First. It, it was. Yeah. It was tipped. Ball's yeah. tipped. Ball's, ball's but, tipped. Anything is up for grabs at that point. It looked like... Um, what I was looking at, it looked like Brown and Roby got tangled up okay. there. And... I think that's who the intended target was so. as he was coming across the field, but it looked like they got tangled up. I was kind of waiting for a flag. I thought there might be something. It was that but ball, the tip ball, though, that really against yeah. that at that point. So a new offense back out onto the field as the maroon team racks up some more points. They go up by 21, go up by three scores here. Meglis. He'll be in shotgun. Hands off. Bounces off of his own offensive line and tries to cut back around, but can't get very far as Travell Wright. And, and defense, is, especially defensive line, has done a great job getting penetration right there. Uh, highlighting another guy, you know, Adam Chaney, transfer, you know, number 16. He's used to actually being a stand-up linebacker himself. But right now they're having him with his hand on the ground, getting pressure. He has a great first step, first step uh, has great size himself, great play strength, uh, and he really has good length and good bend. You know, but there's a great job right there in the run game, and Travell comes up with the tackle. Meglis pulls, rolls right. Has Shepperson all day long, and another touchdown. And that comes on the same side as where Nigel is. Maybe, and when, once we get that replay, just really going to be able to dissect what happens there. But another blown coverage right there from the Tigers. He rolls through. Shepperson finds himself with all day as number 10, Jalen Martin, the DB from Dallas, Texas, Found himself trying to play catch up. Yeah. And it's pretty hard to play catch up against Luke Shepperson. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what the coverage was right there. Uh, you know, you had two guys on, on one receiver, you know, right there in the flats, but right there, Luke is just open pretty much on the, on the same exact kind of play. Uh, you know, a wheel route going right up the sideline. You know, does a great job finding them, too, right there. The quarterback does. Another blown coverage, which is not what you want to see. The score gets a little bit closer, but defense, again, has been doing a really good job so far, so nothing to panic about if you're the defense right now. But you Point. want to get those mistakes out of the way. Points back down to 12 as the Maroon team leads by 12 over the white team. Uh, the offense, and that drive is ended, so now we are – going to the 1v1 goal line matchup. Wide receiver versus DBs. Going back to it, can't help myself anyway. <laughs> but if you're a defense right there, and if you're the coaching staff, I, I, I know you know they're talking with them. You know, what's going on out there? Where's the miscommunication coming from? You know, Because you just got to get that out the way. Oh, there's actually a, a football toss competition as they'll try to Toss these five footballs into the bucket. Oh, got one. I think that's two for the other side, three for the other side, I believe. Four, one more for our man on the right. And that is five. All right. Please congratulate Chief, our winner for the tonight. All right. They are going to throw the rest of these football teams. 
also an awesome job by student activities just to be involved here and get the crowd involved, get a lot of students involved too. You know, they do a great job on our campus. There's events going on every day, all throughout the week, throwing football into the stands. Kind of wish I was down there right now just to get me one. Yeah, I, I would have to say that Brandon Lakes does not have the arm to get it up here to us <laughs> in the booth. I want to yell down at him and see if the shot. But no, I'd say you're right. I, somebody tell him to watch it back and let him know that I said it <laughs> and that he can come get me anytime my office is in the mass communication building yeah, we not, can settle it up you not know uh, Brandon very well very well <laughs> uh, yes but an, another just an amazing job by student activities and really here at the campus you know our president came out and sung the national anthem we've got food trucks inflatables over here to the right a bunch of recruits here today. It's been, you know, a beautiful, well, I guess it hasn't been a beautiful day, but it's been a beautiful night here as it's cleared up a lot. Yeah. And it's just been a great community event, you know, really making it fun and different as opposed to, you know, just 60 minutes of game. So certainly ushering in this new era for Coach Russell. And here comes the T-shirt cannon as well. And you said food truck. No, I just can't stop thinking about food. I'm sorry. I know oh, no. Hey. <laughs> oh, no. Didn't have the distance. Um, we'll fight. We can't. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Brandon! <laughs> Brandon! Uh, I, I guess he, he just didn't want to wanna pay attention to you. Work. It's okay. I tried my best. It's okay. I don't want to yell too much, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that gun can't get up here either. So our first matchup for this 1v1 goal line. And I tell you what, that gun might be able to. Did you just see it? It went right in front of your face. You, you wouldn't have been able to reach it, but Worth it was there. Looks like Tim Pope is up. Uh, going up against Jaden Brown. Uh, the list had Tim Pope versus Nigel Norris, but it looks like it will be Jaden Brown. That is number zero out there. They have Gillis throwing. And these are really fun matchups, by the way. There we go. They, they're they switching it up, it up now. I was going to say, because saw, I saw this matchup in, during spring practice, Jaden against Tim, and Jaden actually won that matchup. It was a great rep from Jaden. had great technique throughout it. You know, he didn't get too freaked out. Pope. And got to blame a little bit of that one on the quarterback there. Yeah, they, they looked like they miscommunicated a little bit. Tim was able to hit a little nice double move, get Nigel a little shaky. Manning will throw this matchup. This is Luke Shepherson versus Antoine Fant. Oh. Beautiful shake from Shepherson. <laughs> that was dirty. Oh, beautiful whip route from Luke right there. He uses his hands, uses his leverage, you know, and, and a really good route runner. Again, running from the slot right there. The guy can do it all. Um, Anton doing his best right there. It was in good position at first, but you know, Luke is able to use his leverage and really get on the outside. Metters throwing this one. Jaquan Sturdivant versus Jaden Brown. There you go, close the distance. Sturdivant reels it in. Was a little too late with his hands right there. Never got his hand around, so really, or head around, so never really saw where the ball was. And Sturdivant made a great play right there, a great catch. And, and kept it late, too. Final matchup, Spencer McCown versus Chance Calvin. Meglis will throw this ball. And that's that, uh, that's that Tennessee connection, the two yeah. high school teammates. Honestly, I think that was a really good ref from Chance. He just needs to be a little bit more aggressive playing the ball right there. He was physical, you know, push them to the sideline, just get your head around a little bit sooner and make those hands a little bit more violent so when that ball comes in, you can just snatch down on it and he, he's not going to come away with that catch. A little bit of a size mismatch, too, on that one as yeah. well. McCown kind of leading over Chance Calvin. Right, Jaden Brown cramped up a little bit off that last route, so... The defense unable to come up with any points. 65-55 as the offense closes within 10. And we go to our final 15-minute segment of offense versus defense 
Well, they'll start on the defensive 40-yard line and go out. And I'll tell you, for as, as defensive-minded and perhaps, I'll use the word, biased as my friend Khalil Baker is here to the right. Guilty. Which I can't blame him. <laughs> the man played defense here at Campbellsville. I don't think you'll find anybody that he will uh, stretch out more for than for Luke Shepperson on the <laughs> offense. It's the only person that I think can fully make him make him convert over. Maybe, maybe CA, maybe, maybe, maybe. Man, like when it, you know, when it comes down to football and or just anything in general, you know, people do it in different genres of life and whatever else you're interested in. Like maybe you're interested in a book and you just like yeah. love this character. Oh yeah. That you love so much, right? Uh -huh. When it comes down to football, there's some guys who just maybe have a man car shot. No I, big deal. Hey, no, no. Johnson able to get the edge. Great blocking by Sturdivant out front. Is Sturdivant able to hold off Ladarius Connor, which is Ladarius Connor is a name that we mentioned yeah. quite a bit last year. He is, he was a threat and a terror to offenses last year, and Sturdivant. And a mismatch on blocking, able to come up with the win. Yeah, LD, you know, trying to get a little bit more healthier this season, but Sturdivant right there just does a great job, you know, another receiver, you know, blocking out on the edge and helping his running back in the run game. Gillis will keep it himself, moving through, and he has it poked away, but able to fall onto it. Got to tuck that ball. Offense closing in points here, 65-59, and still plenty of time for them to make up points. Johnson lines up directly behind Gillis, hands off. Johnson taken down. Gillis, take his commands over here. Send Sturdivant. As Sturdivant makes a good cutback. That one, as he makes number 25 miss. No, I'm sorry, that was number 26. It's Trevin Griffin. DB from Fort Myers, Florida. And I love the looks I'm seeing from your offense right now. You know, trying to make guys play in space, doing some misdirections, some, you know, some RPOs, just read options, different type of looks right now. But he's doing a really good job changing up and providing different looks. I don't know how I feel about the defensive look right now from what we're seeing, but there's no That's safety. Right. Everyone's at the line. And at this moment, you don't know who is coming. It's a very tight pack for sure as they send four and – not much for Gillis to do. I'm sorry, that was actually CA. He handed it off. My apologies. LD makes a great play right there, but if yeah, if your offense, that that's a little overwhelming. I don't at that point you don't know who's coming. Uh, you know, but they're you they're gonna play some zero, they're gonna play some man freeze or man coverage right there. So, you know, great play from the defense, great aggression right there. Uh, that's fun to see, especially in a spring game too. There's not a lot of pressure, you know. Both teams are gonna win in a way. I would say that at the end of the day, the Tigers win, right? Yeah. Gillis has pressure off the back. He has somebody wrapped around his legs, and the rest of the Maroon get there. Man, I look like number 18. Trevon Williams right there, and if it is, uh, he has been great off the edge today, getting a lot of pressure. You see a look at that replay the there. I didn't mean to cut into you. Oh, you're good. I just wanted you to look down to see the screen. Watch that beautiful piece of defense. As the Maroon tack on some more points, and they go up 12. Man, great play right there. And that's what, and that's what you're going to need, especially on those longer downs and 
you know, in passing situations, you know, let's let's get some pressure on the quarterback. And that's not something we were always able to do, you know, last year, but you know, good to see this happening today. And shout out to all those that worked so hard to put this together. You know, Zach Wilson Woo. and we had uh, CJ Burgess and Jordan Annell in here working on our cameras that look so beautiful, helping to get all the colors and everything just right. These beautiful new cameras that we've got and ready to put on display here tonight. Those are some good guys, man, you just listed right That's there. right. It's a, it's a big three right there. Big three. Which big three am I thinking of? Which one? Which big three? LeBron, Bosch, and Wade. Is it Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker? I don't know. Shaq. Oh. <laughs> not Shaq. Well, Shaq, Kobe, and yeah. whichever one you want to add Yeah, whichever one you want to add on night. there. Yeah. MJ, Pippen, and Horace Grant. I don't know. Hey. A lot of three out there. Manning. Has pressure, throws deep over the middle, almost picked off. Defense almost came up with a big turnover. I like the aggression. That's probably one you just don't throw, but I like to see it. Adds a little bit more excitement, a little fun, just to go down the field and take some big shots. Guess at some point you got to see what you're capable of, right? Throw that shot, although you're throwing it into triple coverage. I mean, C.A. is in a triangle there. Yeah, like you had a guy coming from the sideline. You had a guy right underneath. You had a guy over top like that. That's a tough spot. C.A. Collins takes off, lowers the shoulder, and got a little bit back as he lowers it on Antoine Fant. That's what I like to see. That's my guy right there. Love to see that from CA. Again, just runs hard. And when he sees a hole, he is attacking it. And if he sees an open field and a defender coming, he's lowering that shoulder and going through. Manning slings one over the middle. Beautiful pass. Out and running. Fant trying to catch up. He does right before the goal line. Number 86. Gabe Moore. Yeah, that was a strike right there. A key. He kind of looked like there. a little bit of a sidearm, yeah. honestly. Beautiful play. Beautiful pass from Manning. Look at the replay right we here. We see here for sure. Just That was a quick release. Yeah, saw pressure coming right at the last moment. Is able to get that sidearm off, which I didn't even know he had. Good for right. him. That's so right. A great strike and a great run from Gabe right there, too, after the catch. That was all in the snap of that wrist. Right over the middle, delivered with accuracy. Yeah, and way to stand in the pocket, too. You know, he, uh, of course, I, he's, he's just a smaller quarterback. He, just how it goes. And tried a little trick play there as the offense was looking over at the sideline and tried to rush it right up the middle. Doesn't work out for him. The defense not quite fooled. Yeah, those plays are fun, you know, trying to you know, fool the defense a little bit, you know, help give, you, give your offense a lot of you know, some good run too there. That was Cade Kroon, the offensive line out of Owensboro, trying to rush it in there behind, trying to get a, trying to get a little extra points, trying to make it up there. They try to get that uh, non-skill player touchdown. I, I can see right through our head coach, Jake Russ. I know what he's doing, but a fumble out there on the field. And Manning's able to drop on it. Yeah, that just hurts. I'm not going to harp on it too much. We're at a spring game here. Things are fun, but you know, that, that just hurts to try. Yeah. And you got to think, too, at some point, though, it is a little tough for the center because you're you're throwing to – you're snapping to four different quarterbacks. Yeah. And, I mean, let's, let's just mention size difference here. I talked about you knew – when Jake Metters walks out onto the field. Like, they all bring a little bit of something different to the game of football itself, but even looking at them physically, yes, they are also very different. For sure. I, I think, you know, the chest of Jake Metters as Luke Manning has taken down another sack for this defense. I think, you know, realistically, and it's not even a joke, I think you're looking at maybe the, the chest of Jake Metters is about the head of Luke Manning. And that's that's got to be a tough, you know, adjustment for your center on that snap. Yeah, no comment on that. 
I no, you're right. That is what I, it is. I, 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 I get you. Uh, great play from the defensive line right there. You know, the offensive line is kind of you know sleeping a little bit. Alan Parrish is able to get a lot of pressure and really get this come up with a sack right there. So Luke is trying to find his way and navigate the pocket. I've loved both teams' gameplay. I've loved all four quarterbacks out there. They've all made their mistakes, but they've all had some pretty good looks. As we were just praising Luke Manning for his sidearm snap. Yeah, I mean, again, a great way to stand in the pocket right there. If you and he sees the pressure coming, yeah. he sees he's about to get hit, and instead of you know trying to get out of the pocket, trying to evade the sack, he you know sidearms it. You know that's a great instinct right there, very natural look for him, and is able to throw a great strike uh, to Gay Moore right there. Sixty-seven to seventy-three, as the maroon team just slightly ahead by six. Five minutes left and counting down on Jake Russell's first official spring game here as the head coach of Campbellsville University. I think it's a great first impression and a great start. You know, of course, the, the football team has done a lot of great things. You know, recently just had three uh, football players, you know, get baptized you mm -hmm. know, here in the chapel. That's a great moment right there, and that's exactly what you want to see, especially, you know, when you have a new coach here and, you know, he's trying to, you know, invest in these guys and make a change and, and you know, build on what's been done in the past with Coach Thomas. So it's just great to see, and, and you love to be around that type of thing, that type of atmosphere, atmosphere that type of culture. Not only are you looking at a leader of the football team, but you're looking at a leader of men as well. I know he mentioned it in the press conference how much, you know, he, he wants to bring people closer to Christ as well through football. And doing that so here, you follow him on Twitter as well. You know, he posts a lot of stuff, you know, Tiger football related. I know that's where I saw the three players being baptized. Antoine Fant, I believe, was one of them. Yep. So. Antoine Fant, James Johnson, and uh, I think uh, Trayvon Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Big congratulations to those guys. as Metters is out there on the field. Sturdivant goes around. Right over the middle has Shepperson trying to make his man miss. Brown able to wrap him up and stay with it. Good job from Brown as Shepperson really shifty but able to make that tackle. Still moves the chains for another first down. Yeah, we've seen that look a lot, a little play action and a little just strike over the middle. We've seen a lot of success coming out of those type, type of looks from the offense. Pushing forward is Salter. Salter with a big gain there, just making men come with him. Not even really making them miss, just almost dragging them along. So another big first down for this offense. Yeah, and, he, and he's you know, a little bit shorter, but he is thick. He has some great legs on him, you know, able to push those piles, able to drive through, keep those legs training through contact. Metters fumbles it as he pulls it. And his song all over it. Yeah, I think he knew pressure was coming right there. He tried to get it out as soon as he could to flip that ball out there and just lost track of it. Metters line up just under two minutes now. As the offense trails by five points. Rolls, looking downfield, he'll take the short check down. Pope able to slide up through to get back a few yards, but still behind. We're looking at about first, or third and 11, excuse me. So a lot of yards to gain here. If they want to stay in it a minute, 
10. And ticking down. Yeah, it's close. And we'll see if they actually stop the clock here on the drive. I know sometimes they mention that if a good drive was happening, they may not just shut it down. But we'll see here with it being the last one if they shut it down. 74, 69, 45 seconds and counting down. This will be the last play probably here as they try to convert on fourth down. Let's see what they got here. Matters looks over to the side. Great discipline from the defense, defense right there, not jumping off sides. 15 seconds. Looks back at the clock. Sends start of an emotion. Metters throws over to Sturdivant. That goes through his hands. Flags are thrown. Oh, that hurts. And I know Sturdivant is disappointed over there on the side. Yeah, who's who's done well today? And that's a that's a big one to catch because there there was no one in front of him. Especially with the speed of Sturdivant to be able to probably get down that sideline. And it looks like that will do it. 74 to 69. The Maroon team and the defense takes it by five points. So what a so Khalil, what is this uh what what have you liked from tonight, I guess I should ask. That's how I'll phrase it. You know, there's a lot that goes into a spring game, just in general. It's it's more than just about football. There's a lot that goes into it. It's for the alumni, for the recruits, for the, uh, the fans, the audience. You know, but there's a lot of energy tonight, and there's a lot of fun. Like everyone seemed to be having fun and flying around. And, you know, there's a lot of competition going on. You know, so I, I just think this is a great event to have. Uh, I think they've done a great job. You know, inspiring these guys and getting them out here and just getting them out here to compete. And I've loved what I've seen from this team. I love what I've seen from the coaches so far. You know, just pushing their guys, teaching them, you know, helping them along the way. So it's, it's been a really good night and a very successful night, and exactly what you want to see. You know, from a Fighting Tiger football team. The energy has been high here not only from the players but also from the fans we actually had a pretty packed house here for a Friday night here towards the end of the semester a lot of recruits on hand a lot of their parents a lot of parents of the players that are here currently a lot of students and it has been a great night for sure I'm not sure if we're actually going to get I know when we talked originally we were supposed to get coach Russell up here and I'm not sure if he'll be up here or not. So we'll keep it around for just a little bit to see if he'll come up here. Yeah, I think he's one of the music turned down a little bit. Well, yeah. <laughs> nobody over at that desk, so I'm barking up the wrong tree on that one. But. Tiger. It's been all hands on deck, man. Yeah. You know, everyone's been involved, student activities, we've been having a food truck here, you know, the president's been here, he's got to sing the national anthem. Like it's been it's been really fun just to have everyone out to see your community out. And it's a good start too, and it's a great showing, I think a great feeling for Coach Russell as well. And if we get him up here I will ask him about it. But it's gotta be a good feeling to feel, you know, a little bit of that community rally around you in your first spring game. Cause you know, you'd be a little disappointed if, you know, the energy's low and the stands aren't packed. But here tonight they were. People brought the energy. And they were ready to go and watch a little bit of this new era of Tiger football come in to style here. And I'm certainly – I've loved what I've seen this spring. You know, we got to see and hear and get, you know, a little close-up pass to the spring practice and hear these coaches and what they preach. And it's been one of those things – and I'm certainly glad that we've gotten the chance to see. We're going to go ahead and cut it. He's going to talk to the team for a yeah. while. So I'm just going to – we're going to go ahead and call it. Khalil, I appreciate you being here. Uh, hey, thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. This is always a pleasure just to be a part of. 
You know, it's just something I love doing, so thank you for having me. I'm certainly excited for this new season of football in the fall. Have you alongside me, and we'll get to see this new era of Jake Russell and Campbellsville get ushered in in style here, hopefully next fall. Thank you to the CU Sports Network for making tonight possible. Please tune in to Camelsville Tigers, our YouTube page. Be sure to like and subscribe. Stay up to date on all things Camelsville Athletics. Thank you for following. I've been the voice of Fighting Tiger Football, Colin Sheffield. Have a great night.